Imagine this. You're standing at the edge of a beautiful green field. And it's surrounded by tree-lined meadows and rolling hills. In the middle of this field are your sheep. A hundred beautiful white fluffy sheep. To anyone else, they all look the same, but not to you. For you, each one of them is unique. One day, you see that one of your sheep is missing. Immediately, you frantically start searching for this lost sheep. You leave all of the others to graze in the field and you run looking everywhere. But to the end of the field, over the hills, through the forest, finally, you find that little sheep. All alone, trembling, lost. You pick it up, put it over your shoulder, you feel its warm, fluffy tummy around your neck, and you run all the way home, through the forest, up the hill, through the meadow, back home, and you call to your friends and to your neighbors, I found, I found my lost sheep. I brought her home. Let's rejoice together. Let's eat together. Let's celebrate together. This is the story of the lost sheep. And it's a story that Jesus told 2,000 years ago. Why did he share this story? Now, this was a time when most of the people did not understand who Jesus was. He came to love us all. He especially came to love those who were prepared to meet him, but it was those who didn't understand him, perhaps were threatened by him, jealous of him. And so, when Jesus tells this story of the lost sheep, what's happening is he's speaking to the people, his followers. When the Pharisees and the teachers of the law come along and they mock him, they jeer at him, they're whispering to one another. They say, this man welcomes sinners and eats with them. They use these words to accuse Jesus of loving the people who are lost, loving the people who are struggling. And then Jesus turns to them and tells them this parable of the lost sheep. This is how Jesus tells the story. He says, Suppose one of you has a hundred sheep and loses one of them. Doesn't he leave the ninety-nine in the open country and go after the lost sheep until he finds it? And when he finds it, he joyfully puts it on his shoulders and goes home. Then he calls his friends and neighbors together and says, Rejoice with me. I have found my lost sheep. Then Jesus goes on to make his point. He says to the Pharisees, I tell you, in that same way, there will be more rejoicing in heaven over one sinner who repents than over the 99 righteous persons who do not need to repent. more rejoicing for the one sinner who repents 
than for all those who do not need to repent. Why is this? Jesus is reminding them that not only does God love us all, but especially God's heart is lonely and sorrowful for that one lost soul, that one lost sheep, and cannot be happy until everyone is found, until everyone is home. So why then? are the Pharisees mocking Jesus, judging him for spending time to try and find God's lost children. Why are they mocking? Like I mentioned in my last message, it's because they are lost also, but do not know it. They're mocking Jesus and mocking the sinners because they seem to not understand the law. They seem to not follow the law. And the Pharisees have a false sense of righteousness that because they follow the law so adamantly, they can judge the others. And yet they do not understand the purpose of the law. So they mock. So who is the lost sheep? This is the question I want you to hold in your mind for a moment. I'll read some words from our Father. True Father says, We must ask ourselves, what kind of being am I? We are divine princes and princesses with cosmic value who are meant to find the crown of glory by the end of our lives, inheriting all of creation and the entire universe. Father then asks us, so should we be people who allow others to mock us? Should we be people who allow others to doubt us and drive us away? And he answers his own question by saying, absolutely not. We must find ourselves. We need to bear the responsibility for our own restoration and rebuild our original nature. We have to ask, where is my original self? Where is my original self? We're searching full of hope as we struggle to reunite with our true selves. We must uncover our self, which is connected with the origin of history, connected with cosmic law, connected with today's reality, and connected with the future. This is what Father said. We are here to receive grace. We come together to receive grace. But shouldn't we also therefore take responsibility? Yes, we're worthy of grace. But shouldn't we also take responsibility? For what? For what should we take responsibility? Father says, we must find ourselves. We need to bear the responsibility for our own restoration and rebuild our original nature. This is our quest. This is our responsibility. We must find ourselves and rebuild our original nature. Father said it. He said, we have to ask, where is my original self? We're searching full of hope as we struggle to reunite with our true 
self. Isn't that the lost sheep for us today? Isn't that our original true self? Isn't that our original self longing to come home? Yes, we look at the Pharisees as they accuse us, but we accuse them also because we are like them. We get in our own way. We mock ourselves. We doubt ourselves. We are both the accused and the accuser. But we have to fight. We have to fight for that lost sheep, which is our original self. The law? Yes, the law is there to protect us, but that is not the whole story. The whole story. We are to become owners of love and transcend the law. We need to embark on that quest and find our true self. Yes, we are here to receive grace. We are worthy to receive grace. But shouldn't we also take responsibility? Father says there is no freedom without responsibility. Everyone likes the word freedom, but not many people like the word responsibility. But maybe we're looking at it all wrong. Instead of thinking of freedom and responsibility as two things that are supposed to go together, maybe we should understand them as two things that are already one. What would that look like if freedom and responsibility were combined as one? What word we, could we use to describe that thing? I've been thinking about this. I say the word to describe the unity of freedom and responsibility is purpose. Our true purpose, our true unique purpose, each one of us unique and beautiful. Longing to come out longing to be found. Each one of us has that lost sheep inside that is longing to be found. Each one of us must find our true purpose. Surely that is our responsibility and therein where we find our true freedom. True Father says we must uncover ourselves, uncover ourselves, which is connected with the origin of history, connected with cosmic law connected with today's reality and connected with the future. What does that mean? It's our true self. Our true self is connected with the origin of history. That means the very purpose of history, the purpose of existence, the beginning of humanity. Our true purpose, our true self is connected to that thing and connected to cosmic law connected to the principle, connected to cosmic law. There is no true self that is disconnected with the cosmic law. There is no true purpose that is separate from the law of the cosmos. Your true purpose is found there in the same place where you can find cosmic law. And also connected to today's reality. There is no true purpose for your life that is not also connected with the reality of today, whatever that reality is. There is no true purpose for you that is above everything in some ideal, idyllic, beautiful place separate from the world of reality. Your true purpose is very much connected with the reality of today and must in some way be a response to the reality of today and therefore responsible for the reality of today. And fourthly, your true purpose connected to the future. That means that what we do with our life, what we do with our true self, what we do with our true 
original nature and purpose is also the legacy that we leave behind and the message that we leave for the future, the traditions that we leave for the future. The ripples of our lives will lead long into the future. Our true self is connected to all these four things. And to be that person, to find that person, to find that lost soul, to find that lost sheep, and to embrace it, that person is to fulfill your responsibility. That is where you will find your true freedom. So how do we do it? How do we find this lost self, this lost sheep? How do we find our purpose? Wow. Actually, true parents guide us about this also. Fundamentally, if you boil it down to everything, it is to show up for God and show up for others. How do you like that? Show up for God and show up for others. Honor God. And honor others. Can you imagine trying to honor God in all that you do and honor others? Serve God and serve others. We need, we need to love God. We need to love God and love others. Where is it that you find the resonance with God? And how is it that you can be of unique service to others through those actions, even though it might be difficult to feel it, it might be difficult to see, you might not find yourself immediately. You may have to walk over many hills and through many forests. But you will find it. You will find your purpose. Yes. We are worthy to receive grace today. We will receive grace today. But if we want to be truly free, we must fulfill our responsibility. But fulfilling our responsibility is more than just doing what we're supposed to. It's more than just following the law. It is to find our purpose. Orient your compass towards finding your purpose, because if you do so, you will find yourself feeling more free and fulfilling your responsibility. Don't think of it anymore as a battle between freedom for what you want and responsibility over here for what you have to do. They are one and the same thing if you are looking for your true self, if you are looking for your original self, if you are looking to fulfill your purpose. So find it. Find it. Find your lost sheep and come home. This is why we build community. This is why we pray. This is why we offer our jungsa. This is why we serve God and serve others. This is why we build community. It gives us strength to believe. And it gives us the strength to find ourselves. I believe our true purpose will reveal itself. If we continually do these things, and if we continually come together to do so, we will find our true selves. In fact, I believe in many ways it will reveal itself to you. It will call out to you just like that sheep must have been calling out to its owner. Surely when he came closer and closer, he heard that cry of the sheep. He heard the sound of the sheep calling to him. Asking to be found. Longing to come home.
So should we let others mock us on that path? Should we let others mock us when we are serving God, when we are seeking to serve God and we're seeking to proclaim about it? Should we let others mock us when we're serving others, honoring others, loving others? No. No matter how small we may feel, no matter how pathetic it may seem, our offering, we should not let others mock us. Just like Father said, absolutely not. We must find our original selves. Father says, we must ask ourselves, what kind of being am I? Father says, we are divine princes and princesses with cosmic value. Unbridled value. More value than the whole world. Value of the cosmic who are meant to find the crown of glory by the end of our lives, if it takes us that long. Divine princes and princesses with cosmic value who are meant to find the crown of glory and we will find the crown of glory. If not now, then at least by the end of our lives, inheriting all of creation, Father says, inheriting all of creation and the entire universe. It's unfathomable. This is our parents' love for us. This is our inheritance for all of us. Not just for the 99 of us, for all 100 of us, all 1 billion of us, all 8 billion of us. No matter how far we've gone, no matter how far, no matter how long we've been lost, no matter how long we've been over there beyond the meadows, beyond the forests, crying out in the dark, crying out in the cold. It is not just a story of sheep. It is not just a story of Jesus and Pharisees and lost souls. It is us. It is me. It is all of us. Our original self, our true self. It is there inside of us. It is there inside all of us, longing to be remembered, longing to be found, longing to be brought home. This is our story. And this is our parents' love for us, such that when we come home, Heavenly Parent is ready to embrace us, longing to embrace us, crying just like we are inside, longing to come together as one. This is our parents' love for us. This is our inheritance. God is not only ready, God is longing, longing to welcome us. So brothers and sisters, come home, welcome home. We may have to go out every day again and again to find another piece of ourselves, another lost part of ourselves, another piece to uncover of our true nature but let's do it and let's do it together, serving Heavenly Parent and serving one another, helping Heavenly Parent, loving Heavenly Parent and loving one another. That is simply all we can do and is all we're being asked to do. It's all we will do to come home, to welcome home and God bless you.